In this video, we will be learning about QQ plots, what they are, how to create them using Excel, and how to interpret them. The Q in QQ plot stands for quantile, that is, it is a quantile quantile plot. A quantile is a slice of a data set, such that each slice contains the same amount of data. Suppose, the data is divided into two equal parts, then we say, the data has been divided into two quantiles, such that each quantile contains 50% of the data. The next question is to know, where, and how, is a QQ plot used? A QQ plot is used to compare two distributions, an actual or empirical distribution, versus a theoretical distribution. The objective is to find, how close is the theoretical distribution, to the actual distribution. In data analysis, we often want to understand the nature of the data, that is, the type of distribution the data follows, to perform calculations on it. QQ plots serve this purpose. In this example, the two distributions considered for the QQ plot are, T distribution and standard normal distribution. We assume that T distribution is our actual distribution, and, we are trying to map the normal distribution to it, to check if they match. First, let us see how the plot looks like. It is a scatter plot. On the x-axis, we have the theoretical distribution, that is, standard normal in this case. And, on the y-axis we have the actual distribution, that is, the t-distribution. But, what information does this plot convey? Notice the middle part of the chart. It forms a linear line. This means that, the middle range of the theoretical distribution, correctly maps the middle range of the sample distribution. By middle range what we mean is that, if we divide the data into three parts, the two tails, left tail and the right tail, and, the body, that is, what lies between the two tails, then the middle part refers to the data in the body. Note the ends of the graph, these represent the data in the tails, and they are not linear. But what does this non-linearity mean? The non-linearity can indicate two things, skewness, that is, there is more data on one side of the distribution, or kurtosis, that is, the tails may be fatter or thinner than the actual distribution. So, how does one identify this? Since our actual distribution is T distribution and the theoretical distribution is normal distribution, we know that the actual distribution will have fatter tails. Also, as is evident from the data and the graph, there is more data in the tails, in the actual distribution than in the theoretical distribution, that is, the actual distribution has fatter tails. We can also see that the right tail is more heavy than the left one. Let's see how to deduce this from the QQ plot. The deviations on both end of the graph indicates that the tail distribution of the actual data is different from the theoretical data. On the left tail, the points are below the dotted line. This means that the actual distribution has more negatives than the theoretical distribution. Similarly, on the right tail, the points are above the dotted line. This means that the positive values in the actual distribution is higher than that in the theoretical distribution. If we consider the magnitude, ignoring the direction, we can conclude that the actual distribution has higher values in the tails compared to the theoretical distribution. To understand this a little more, let's consider this QQ plot. It is plotted on the same data. The only difference is that, now we have the normal distribution as the actual distribution, and it is plotted on the y-axis. Whereas the t-distribution is the theoretical distribution, which is plotted on the x-axis. We know that, the normal distribution has thinner tails than the t-distribution. It is reflected in the chart. The points on the left, are above the dotted line meaning the actual distribution has less negatives than the theoretical distribution. Similarly, on the right tail, we see that the points are below the dotted line, meaning, the actual distribution has less positives than the theoretical distribution. This confirms that the actual distribution, 
that is the normal distribution in this case, has thinner tails than the theoretical distribution. Now, let's understand how to create this scatter plot. As discussed, our actual distribution is T distribution. Let me show you how I have created this series. We use the RAND function, and feed this data to the T inverse function. This gives us a T score which follows T distribution. Next, we simply paste the data as values and then sort it. This is important. The data must be in a sorted order, otherwise we would not be able to calculate quantiles. We see the different measures for it. Mean. Volatility, measured by standard deviation, which is slightly greater than 1. Skewness, and kurtosis. Now that we have a sorted distribution data, let's rank them. The data is ranked in an ascending order, that is, the smallest value is given a rank 1. Next, we need to calculate the quantiles. The quantile would simply be, the rank, divided by the total observations in the dataset. Finally, our theoretical observation would be the standard normal distribution. So, we calculate the z-values for the given quantiles. Notice that, since this is a standard normal distribution, it has a mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1. Now that we have the two series, let's plot them on a scatter plot. First, go to insert and create a blank scatter plot. Then, go to select data and add the x and y data series. Here, the x-axis will have the standard normal series and, the y-axis, will have the t-distribution data. And, voila, we have the QQ plot. Now, let's make some fancy adjustments. We go to format axis, and change the marker type, to make the dots as crosses. And then, add a trend line to it. Do a little bit of formatting of the trend line, to make it more visible. Congratulations! You have created a QQ plot. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.